Hello, everybody, and welcome to this week's episode of Lightning Struck Pages. I'm Todd. And I'm Jared. Today, we are talking about Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, page 382. Let's get started. Mr. Bagman comes too, squeaked Winky. And, a, and to Harry's great surprise, and Ron's, and Hermione's too, by the looks on their faces, she looked angry again. Mr. Bagman is a bad wizard, a very bad wizard. My master isn't liking him. Oh no, not at all. Bagman? Bad? said Harry. Oh yes, Winky said, nodding her head furiously. My master is telling Winky some things, but Winky is not saying. Winky? Winky keeps her master's secrets. She dissolved yet again in tears. They could hear her sobbing into her skirt. Poor master, poor master, no Winky to help him no more. They couldn't get another sensible word out of Winky. They left her to her crying and finished their tea, while Dobby chattered happily about his life as a free elf and his plans for his wages. Dobby is going to buy a sweater next, Harry Potter he said, happily pointing at his bare chest. Tell you what, Dobby, said Ron, who seemed to have taken a great liking to the elf. I'll give you the one my mom knits me this Christmas. I always get one from her. You don't mind maroon, do you? Dobby was delighted. We might have to shrink it a bit to fit you, Ron told him, but it'll go well with your tea cozy. As they prepared to take their leave, Many of the surrounding elves pressed in upon them, offering snacks to take back upstairs. Hermione refused, with a pained look at the way the elves kept bowing and curtsying, but Harry and Ron loaded their pockets with cream cakes and pies. So we're in the kitchens. We are in the kitchens. This, I believe this is the first time we see the kitchens. Yes. Like, not this particular page, but this instance well, because when we first see. Hermione wants to check out the kitchens to see how the house elves are, right? Right. She, or is it yeah. because Dobby... No, she didn't know Dobby was there. So she found out from Fred and George how to get, how to get into the kitchens. They didn't realize why she was asking at first. Mm -hmm. You know, like, don't you go upsetting them. The, you'll take them off their cooking. Yep. And uh, so, she's, so she went down there at some point. But we see her come back to Harry and say, like, Harry, you have to come see this, da da da, da and drags him to the kitchens, and that's when they find out that Dobby's working there. Yep. Uh, and then they also find that Winky is working there also well, now. Is there. I don't know if she's really yeah, working. She's not really working. Because all the house elves kind of treat, like... Like, look at her and treat her with disdain, because she yeah, just... like, ugh. She just mopes, ugh. and she's... Although... She, she's a drunk house elf. Although the other house, the house elves, like, they almost cover her up. When yep. she passes out, at one out. point, yeah, they yeah. just cover with a with a tablecloth. Yep, just don't don't mind the mess. Just, but they also aren't big fans of Dobby either. No, <laughs> they but they dislike them for two to completely different reasons. Yep. Dobby works, but they don't like Dobby because he keeps talking about freedom, and, freedom, and yep. getting wages, and which they just think is not proper yeah. for a house elf. And then they don't like. Winky, because Winky is so depressed about losing her old master that she won't work for her new master. Yep. And they're like, you know, there's no reason to complain when there's work to be done. Yep. You know, so two very different reasons, yeah. but... But you get Dobby talking about what he's going to do with his wages, which he had to talk Dumbledore down. Yes. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I... I I taught he was willing to give ten counts a day and holidays and da 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 and I was like, but I talked him down. <laughs> <laughs> I like I like being free and I like wages, but I like working more. Mm -hmm. Which is, it I think that it's a weird common. It's a weird way that J.K. Rowling addresses slavery. In this particular instance, because obviously it's it's one of those connections that's supposed to be made. Yeah. But and obviously Hermione is the one saying, you know, well, and also being like the muggle born who went to school, who probably learned about slavery in history class right. where like exactly. the wizards don't know about this. It's it's just 
I mean, that, they probably knew, but not as prevalently. Yeah. But it's just weird. I mean, we're. It's just it's just strange because. Mm-hmm. What's well, it, they slavery, talk about it in a way but, like, in a way they want to be in servitude. Even Ron's like, I yeah, mean, but they they want to be that. And way. part of it, I think, is supposed to address you know the idea that the indoctrination mm-hmm. concept, which is very strange. And so it's just, it's very interesting how it gets addressed. And so I'm not entirely sure that this is supposed to be a pure s- symbolism to human slavery. Mm-hmm. It's certainly supposed to touch on slavery. I think I'm it's just more curious supposed where to be like almost the like is, the human like, symbolism of like racism that too yeah where it's like you know we may have the same views but then there's sometimes where the way that you were brought up you may have a slightly different thought on a situation sure and that's addressed i mean in numerous ways i mean with muggleborns and you know all that stuff but but i I just find it interesting the way this whole storyline is supposed to lead in like it just the way Hermione wants house elves to be treated mm-hmm. leads into the next book with Creature. Right. Where she's always like, you need to treat Creature well. He's going to betray us if we don't. Like, you need to treat him well. We can't yep. set him free because I understand you can't set him free, but treat him like an actual creature. Yeah. Yep. And because they don't treat him well, he betrays them. But by the seventh book, he's friend to harry yeah like because harry's like listen i i get it i know what what happened to you like here's here's the locket mm-hmm. like and creature cleans himself up because he's being treated well he respects them yep agreed yeah that's uh, what this teaches you is just give everybody a little bit of respect yep um but i think it's funny because like we finally get to see the kitchens we do and, like the, the kitchen is huge it's it's the same size as the, the great hall. the great hall and, and the it tables mirrors, have yeah. teleporting plates and stuff so they yep. they set the table and then it shows up yep which explains something that like you know for four books you had been probably wondering is where, where how's all this food get made yeah where does it come from because we know about gamps law which you can't just summon food. Right. You can't create. You can yeah. summon. You can't you create. You can't create food from nothing. Correct. You can multiply it. Which You can multiply it if you have some. You can um, summon it if you know where it is. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> which is one of those things. It's like Harry, Ron, and Hermione did not figure out how to catch fish. But then there's a scene... Where they just go, Accio fish. Yeah, how they didn't <laughs> think of that. Well, I wonder if they were like hesitant. Well, no, because they're putting up spells for everything else. Mm-hmm. So they just Harry is like trying to probably trying to catch fish with a stick and fish line or yep. something. And but it's like they could even go to like just outside of town and go Accio bread. Like they really, true, but the reason they didn't want to do that is they didn't want to draw attention. Want to, well, yeah, bread floating through. Yeah, um, and they didn't want to steal. Air, yeah, and they didn't want to steal. But see, the thing with the fish is they could easily go Accio fish and like because yep. I think all he caught was like little tiny fish, and Hermione's yeah. like, I can make a stew out of this, and like later on was just like just complaining. Yeah, ugh, this is gross. Like. Yeah, but then you have, um, it's uh, Ted and uh, Dean, Dean, Griphook and, and Gornuck, Gornuck and one other person. Is there one other person? Yeah, it's the wizard that um, that Arthur and Harry, when he is pretending to be somebody else, talk about. I don't know the name. name. It's not. It's not a big deal. It's not. He's not important. No, the... I, I think he dies. Yeah, I think they find him dead with, uh, Ted at some point. Yeah, 
Well, they we hear about like yeah, Ted and them because then they're worried about Dean. Yeah, but then Dean shows up at the Battle of Hogwarts. Well, they find Dean when they get captured. Oh yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, because he was captured by the um, the Snatchers. The Snatchers. Um. So, but the the fish thing. It's just like you know, all they had to do was catch one fish. Yeah, and they could have multiplied it. True. 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 Like Akio salmon. Boom! Now we have salmon every night. All that omega three. Well, I feel like though. So, what they probably don't know is a good um, refrigerating charm. I mean, couldn't they so, use uh, Glacius? Maybe, but I I know that's 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 a spell that's used in the video game and not in the book. Right. So I mean, the but question they is, could is also, whether they knew. Couldn't they just make a tank in or even just she could summon a bubble in Aguamente and have the fish just swim in a bubble of water? She could. And just when she needs it, make she, a little aquarium, yeah. Yeah, make a little aquarium and when she needs a fish, she multiplies the fish and cooks the multiplied fish. Yeah. You keep one fish alive and just keep multiplying the fish. I wonder if that affects the meat. I would assume not. Yeah. I wouldn't think so. But could you um, only duplicate the 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 live fish or do you, could you are you only able to duplicate the food the fish? The food fish. So once you yeah, cook it, cuz are you if you just turn if at that point you're more cloning than duplicating food. Yeah. I don't know. Well, that's where it becomes kind of strange is it's like Certain things that make sense because we see mm-hmm. it exemplified. So Harry filling up, you know, the mead, he's able to create more of it. Mm-hmm. Um, but then you have like, so if you want more mashed potatoes, okay, that that seems your pile of mashed potatoes just gets bigger. Yeah. But with mm-hmm. meat, it's I don't know. It seems like unless it's more of a a size because what you would have to do is you'd be multiplying more than what you eat. You'd be having to multiply organs, bones, which aren't food, technically. Yes, but you can. It's easier to repair bones than it is to grow bones. You can do it, but it's a painful process. Exactly. So you're just creating bones out of nothing. That's difficult. Yeah. So I feel like it'd have to be the the meat of the fish could be multiplied. So what you could do is you could just have your leftover fish you multiply that eat the leftover fish from the day before and save the old fit the new fish for the next day and just keep multiplying that like but when you multiply it it shouldn't be multiplied as fresh because you're multiplying what you had so it should have the same level of consistency of what you had so it would always it would just (laughs) it it would be the same so it would eventually go bad yeah. yeah um well, you just keep a bunch of fish alive. So the in your question aquarium. is: Is there a transfiguration spell that Hermione, because Harry and Ron wouldn't know, it, but that Hermione might would know to make an older to, food be no fresher? to oh. to um to duplicate something like to basically clone a fish? I mean, I'm sure there probably is a spell. It's easier with like. I mean, she can turn. <laughs> She can create birds out of nothing. Why can't she make fish out of nothing? Weren't they paper birds? Were they? Yeah. I'd have to look back at the book because I didn't think so, but that oh. they might have been. Yeah. Um, but I think it's probably easier to like duplicate a plant than it is an animal. Yes, I would agree. Especially with that. like a potato. Sure. Like you could, but it could also be an engorgement charm. Like, yeah, you can get more food by engorging the meat and making a bigger salmon fillet, and we'll just eat off that like it's a pot roast rather than a small fillet. True. But then the semantics of actual like yeah protons and stuff, and like it would be very tough. But yeah, I, yeah. Who knows? Who knows how that really works. Um, I think the only other interesting tidbit we get from 
this page is we get a hint in this one of those, you know, because the mystery clue, we get a clue about Bagman. And so then we yep. start questioning, okay, what's what's the deal with Bagman? Yeah. Well, because we at start this seeing point, him he's, around the goblins. and Yeah, we've seen him around the goblins at the Quidditch World Cup. He was kind of disheveled at the Quidditch World Cup. Uh, he's kind of been, like, helping Harry in a way. Yeah, and it a, seems fishy to Harry. Yeah. Yeah. But then we find out later. Well, and then later on we find the pensive. Have we gotten to the pensive at this point? No, I don't believe so. Yeah, we eventually get the pensive. Because, remember, he's really questioning it right now, and he's like, what? Bagman, bad. Yeah. Then later he sees that he was and, on trial yeah. for potentially being connected to Voldemort passing information yeah. to the death eaters because he just wanted to work for the ministry and right. was like oh well Rookwood will get me in yeah not realizing that he was a death eater but yeah. um so that yeah but then we find out he just made a bad bet and paid off the or he made a bad bet and paid off the bet with fake money Correct. and everybody's after him which then he yep. ends up disappearing after this book yep he just disappears yep don't cross a goblin don't. so the two lessons of today respect everybody and don't cross goblins they'll make you disappear well yeah so without further ado if you are listening to us on podcast services make sure to check out our youtube channel marvelous marauders and if you're watching us on youtube make sure to subscribe if you haven't already and hit that bell so you can be notified Every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday when we post our Meanwhile Mondays, our Podcast Wednesdays, and our Movie Review Fridays. Jared, do the thing. Everybody just keep reading. You never know when lightning might strike. All right. We will see you in the next video.